Sir Anish Kapoor, <laughs> one of the world's uh, most visible and influential artists. Um, I'm so pleased to sit here with you in front of Thank such you. a great audience. It's true, it's a world premiere not happening here in our conversation, but just outside of this auditorium. Um, truth is the theme of this entire conference. One can be true to oneself, perhaps. One can be true to a material as a sculptor or true to a new technology. Um, what would it be to be true to this new, relatively unknown territory of virtual reality? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your new experiment. After our uh, previous speaker, it's hard to um, reflect on the relative uh, 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 frivolity of uh, such questions. However, they, they do all go to the same um, fundamental questions about um, how we perceive our world. Um, the virtual, virtual reality is rather interesting. Um, at one level, virtual, we can do. We have a sense of what that might means. Reality is more complicated. Um, so working with new technology um, uh, throws one immediately into this question. Um, what I've discovered is that it's sophisticated, but not sophisticated <laughs> enough. Um, that uh, to make reality, it's full of such immense subtlety that one struggles to hold its um, its. Um, myriad forms, let's say. Um, we can all get a glimpse of the piece outside. Yes. I did already. Yes. Maybe you can just tell us what it is. What, it's some sort of it? journey. Well, some yeah. sort of so we start in a garden of a kind, and then, of course, things, ha things like this, this image here, happen. Um, and um, one kind of falls through. One of the things I've discovered about this medium is that it's very good at... Um, um, vertigo. So the propensity to fall is, is immense. And of course, the vertiginous and the sublime are very close to each other. This idea of a poetic kind of falling in, um, especially when it's darkness. I think our previous speaker was speaking about a certain kind of darkness. And it's that darkness that I think I'm after, this sense that whatever rational, apparently rational, we can bring to, to um, our understanding of things. We are always um, struggling with ghosts. Um, so, to describe the piece again, you, 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 the, the world shatters in whatever way, and then you fall into a vertigo that is, purports to be the inside of your body. So it's a kind of inversion of the self, falling into yourself. Um, and then it goes. You'll see. You can't help, in, 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 in virtual processes, you can't help but have a narrative sequence. But it's not really like a film, no? It's, it's a, more like a space. Well, it, that's the, the difficulty, is how to avoid it being like a film. Because Film Word has explored some of these questions. Um, but how to you know, have it be an, a, a condition, a singularity, rather than uh, an elaborate... Um, um, journey, processual journey, yeah. a narrative journey, in other words. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a dialogue between the arts and science, and I'm so pleased that you're here because you materialize that dialogue right now. There's also a dialogue between artistic possibilities and new technologies, and it's no exaggeration that the entire field of art changed when film appeared, photography appeared. A few decades later, some decades later, virtual or digital possibilities, the internet. Do you think that VR, AR, all these digital possibilities, do they represent a revolution of that magnitude? Really hard to say. I mean, I feel we are, um, as architects were um, 15 years ago, at the beginning of a process of manipulating, architects could manipulate form th uh, virtually, um, um, and it led to certain kind of form, um, architecturally, I mean, um, um, 
And we are, that technology has moved on massively so that, in fact, you can make all kinds of um, virtual, real form now. It's buildable. What's in the virtual world is now buildable in architecture. Um, virtual reality, I think, is still, still the, it's a kind of infancy. Um, we haven't quite, it isn't sophisticated enough, according to me, um, to be able to, uh, you know, go, uh, where does one want it to go? I mean, eventually, I, I, I've identified a certain kind of darkness, a certain kind of vertigo, a certain kind of um, poetic condition. So how do you use a medium in order to, to, to go there? Is the medium sophisticated enough? Um, does it represent, to answer your question more specifically, um, another version of a new window on seeing, a new, another version of the world? Um, it does, potentially, and it has potential to be every bit as big as photography, I think. Mm. Um, but it's full of, full of issues at the moment, technical issues, weirdly, which photography <laughs> didn't present. You know, the wonderful thing about photography is that it's immediate. You, you can take a piece of photographic paper, expose it to the light, or cover it slightly, and there you have an image. Process it, and you have an image. This is much, much more complicated. I mean, you are <clears throat> one of the very first major artists, if I may, who tried this new medium. And uh, to me, knowing relatively little about this new <laughs> technology, it seems um, uh, meaningful. And I'll tell you why. That uh, many here, I think, have seen uh, Sir Anish art, and uh, uh, there are mysterious spaces where one doesn't really know. It's not illusionism, but there's, there, there are these uh, places where one doesn't know if it's a velvet surface or if it's a cavity, a kind of hidden space hiding somewhere. Um, it's as if you were already in virtual reality before this technology actually materialized. And I, I'll put a question now more precisely. Do you think, and you don't only have to talk about yourself, but do you think that art ha has a kind of prophetic capacity? I'm, you know, this sounds very romantic and old-fashioned, but... But, uh, you know, I, I heard a, a talk recently where someone said that Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, the novel, was actually already a film, although their mm -hmm. film didn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. But she had cinematic uh, mm -hmm. ideas. And I have a little bit the feeling that some of your work mm -hmm. has virtual reality effects before the technology happened. Mm -hmm. This is a complicated <laughs> question, but... It is how a complicated do you answer question. It? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, I, but I do believe that... Um, um, one of the things I've been concerned with over the years is a relationship between materiality and non-materiality. So, um, um, two-dimensional space and three-dimensional space, or four-dimensional space, if we, if we, if we like. Um, um, uh, what that has led me to, one part of it is the absence of the object, so that's one thing. The other is hypermateriality. That is to say, some things, looking for conditions of material that are more material than material. Now, it's a weird idea, um, but I do believe it exists. Um, especially, I don't know, I mean, in this group of works that are being shown, I don't think, but other works that I, I feel, there is something about more material than material. Um, virtual world offers that as a possibility, because it's all happening in your head, it isn't real or, well, it isn't real at all. Um, and since it's all happening in there, there is this sense that it, it's got a, a hyper quality, um, um, even though the reality is abstracted. So it's good at certain, it does mist, for example, like no other mist. Um, um, it's not very good at a face, though. Mm. So there are things that it, it can do abstract, um, or relatively abstract conditions. It does color incredibly. So you can be immersed in a, uh, in a, in a color scene um, beautifully. Mm -hmm. So there are things that it does very, very, very well and can have this um, um, visceral mm -hmm. effect. And th that's why I've, I've singled out um, vertigo because it's visceral mm -hmm. and physical. I mean, your art is to a certain extent, based on um, knowledge, scientific knowledge, explorations um, 
scientific, I don't know if it's the right word, but you're an expert in human perception and in certain light and darkness phenomena, uh, pigments that absorb light, very specialized knowledge, um, all having to do with, I would think, human perception. Uh, there's a, something to explore there, but also a limitation. In virtual reality, it seems there is no limitation. Except the technology. I think this is a virtual piece called Ascension, where we are sort of... I'm trying to make an object out of smoke. By spinning the air in a room, um, it kind of becomes an object, so nothing making something. You know, it's one of those, one of those kind of possibilities. Um, technology is the only limitation, really. Uh, our ability to see, I think, is, has to be the other. That is a poetic, it's a poetic limitation. We can do it, I believe, technologically if we can see it. And that is a curious uh, um, chicken and egg thing. A bit of one does a bit of the other. And this thing between the two. It, it is extraordinary that um, um, the actual making of a work also moves the technology along because it has to, because the, the work demands a certain sophistication or otherwise um, in a direction and it pushes the, pushes the technology. That's a process, so um, um, it'll take a while. You emphasize that it's poetry, poetics, that mm. is your field rather mm. than the search for truth. Mm -hmm. And yet, mm -hmm. I know a little bit about how you work in a very sophisticated uh, atelier studio with the people supporting you. Um, would you say that the, that the artist studio or your artist studio is a bit like a laboratory or mm. a kind of uh, where it's about poetics rather than the search for ultimate truth? Um, I think it is a search for ultimate truth, believe it or not, and it is like a laboratory. I mean, but the, the experiments are, um, um, uh, they curiously not haphazard. Um, one returns again and again to the same psychic conditions um, um, without realizing. You think you're doing something completely different and then you're back in the same um, little, little furrow. One hopes that it's deep enough. Um, the work is to not have five great creative years, but to actually keep that process alive, um, even if it is in a certain area. Keep it going. What does it mean? Being an artist for a short period of time, easy. It's the long term that really counts. This, this um, 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 continual belief that somewhere um, one has to almost remove um, one's own sense of um, I've said it before, as having something to say. You know, one sense of, get yourself out of the way. Then maybe it can happen. Huh. I'm so interested in this dialogue between the art world and the artistic disciplines and science. Therefore, I'm really happy you're here with us. Um, it's interesting when you say, virtual is easy, <laughs> reality is difficult, so maybe you've invented a new genre of being virtual <laughs> Unreality. Unreality, that'd be better. Yeah. <laughs> so please do look at the piece which is installed outside and a big applause for Sir Anish Kapoor. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us. Thank you, Daniel.